Good morning, everyone. Before I begin, I'd like to offer a huge thank you to O-Search and everything you are doing for um, all the research that's being done, because quite literally, without you, much of our research would not be possible. I'd also like to extend a huge thank you to Brian Frazier of DNR. He was a key asset in obtaining the data I'm about to present to you this past summer. So the topic I'm going to be talking to you about today is antibiotic producing bacteria as a health proxy for sharks of the Port Royal Sound. And these are our preliminary results. This work is still ongoing. So as an introduction, as uh, many of you may know, it's been noted in previous research um, that sharks may possess the ability to heal their wounds very quickly. Um, doing research, I did find one of these articles. Um, there is actually few articles on the matter, but what articles there are, the one listed boat injuries. Oh, boat injuries is very interesting. This was um, about a white shark named Prop that was observed for a period of two months in South Africa, I believe back in 2008. And it quite literally was struck by the prop of a boat and it, it sustained a massive wound in front of its front dorsal fin. Now, uh, Prop left the area for a period of nine months and then upon return, um, he was positively identified as Prop, but his wound was significantly healed. Um, in previous work, Dr. Ritchie has showed antibiotic producing bacteria in species of skates and rays. We wanted to maximize upon that research and now look at sharks. So what is our objective? Our objective was to identify antibiotic producing bacteria associated with the sharks and then see if those bacteria were playing a factor in the overall healing of the sharks wounds that they sustained. We also wanted to identify possible antibiotic sources for human use and then uh, because uh, as many of you are well, uh, as many of you know, we're running out of antibiotics worldwide. So where did we do this research and why did we do it there? We did all of our research in two areas, uh, one being the St. Helena Sound in South Carolina and then off the coast of Hilton Head with O-Search uh, last March for the first Low Country expedition. Um, there's not much literature on why the uh, sharks seem to conjugate in this area, but as Brian mentioned previously, it is areas of high salinity and opportunistic feeding. Um, the first two images above, this is um, one of the bull sharks we obtained with Brian this past summer. And this is actually our third tiger shark and our last tiger shark we were able to obtain in 2017. The two bottom images of are the mature male tiger shark Weimer that we were able to obtain with O-Search last March. So I will say this, our shark sample set was not ideal. Um, we did capture more black tip sharks than anything. We originally wanted to focus primarily on tiger sharks, but having only been able to obtain three of these sharks, we shifted our focus to other sharks of interest. Um, we obtained three tiger sharks, two bull sharks, five black tips, one lemon, and one black nose shark. I'm now going to talk to you a little about about the process we use to obtain these samples, um, and then I'll go into more detail about the areas of interest we're looking at. Um, the samples were obtained using a sterile swab. Um, we would swab the areas of interest, uh, for example, the dorsal surface, and then these uh, swabs were immediately placed into a sterile screw cap tube and then put in a cooler for transport back to the laboratory. As you can see here, the places we were mainly looking at included the dorsal and ventral surfaces, the gills, the nostril, the ampullae of Lorenzini, the teeth, the cloaca, the, uh, and claspers if it was a male. And if available, we would also get blood samples. So we had six human and four marine pathogens we were testing. And I'm going to go into a little bit of detail about the, how we obtained our results. So firstly, we would obtain the samples from the organisms, and then we would pure culture them and that took up to a week to do, and then we would create libraries from the pure cultures. We would then UV radiate these um, isolates for two to three hours, killing the bacteria, but leaving any possible antibiotics behind. We would then overlay the isolates with the strains, and this is actually what Dr. Diego is doing here, is overlaying, and then we would get our results. So this is our total number of isolates classified by shark and the area of the shark we obtained it from. Now just because it's up here right now, um, this is our total number. It doesn't mean that it's producing antibiotics. You'll see that in a future slide. What's interesting 
here is uh, pay attention to the black nose because it's, it's sky high compared to the rest. But as you'll see, just because it's sky high with producing overall isolates, it doesn't mean that it's going to be positive. Also pay attention here that the two black tips are higher right here in one and two than five. But you'll see that doesn't necessarily indicate anything um, based upon positives. And you'll see in a second why. This is very interesting because this is the same isolate which was D5, which came from one of our, what came from BF1, which is our code for one of our bull sharks. And it was actually obtained from the teeth of the bull shark. And this was positive against multiple strains, one of which being MRSA. Um, and this is important because MRSA is very prevalent in our hospitals. And it's also been known to be very antibiotic resistant. Um, we had 884 total bacterial strains isolated from 12 sharks of five species. You can see that broken down by species here. Um, again, it was not ideal because we did obtain more black tips than anything else. But this is uh, preliminary results and it's still ongoing. Um, and you can see that our black tip one and two were four and five percent. And if you remember from the previous slide, they were higher than black tip five with overall isolates. But we did have an outlier at 35 percent um, with black tip number five. Both of our bull sharks um, are producing a good, men, a, a good amount of antibiotic producing bacteria. And then here, this one right here, Tiger 1, that is Weimer. Uh, tiger 2 is Beaufort. And Tiger 3 is the one tiger shark we were able to obtain with Brian. Now, black nose number one, if you remember, um, I'll go back a few slides right here. Black nose, <laughs> our one black nose we obtained was sky high with uh, overall isolates, but look how low these numbers are um, for the antibiotic producing bacteria. And then our one lemon shark was at 11%. Here's the total, total number of antibiotic producing isolates per shark classified by the area of the shark obtained. Um, we did have the most coming uh, in preliminary results from the ventral surfaces. Uh, this, that may stay the same. It may, it may change as results go forth. Here we have the number of shark bacterial strains showing antibiotic activity against our test strains. Um, this one right here is a very sensitive strain, um, but it's showing the most results. And then MRSA, again, is high. And then this right here is our tiger shark. This is interesting because it actually breaks down all the sharks we were able to obtain and the um, antibiotic activity for each shark. Again, black tip three and four are showing no results where black tip five, which we didn't have very many overall isolates from, is showing the most activity. And then our tiger sharks are doing very well. Um, we have over 20 promising isolates for drug discovery. Um, these are something that we want to look at more closely and see if possible antibiotics can, be, can come out of this for human use. Um, all three of our tiger sharks are up here, and they're all positive for MRSA. Uh, our one lemon shark is here. Only two of our black tips are here out of our five. Again, two of those were not producing any antibiotic activity. And then both of our bull sharks are here. So in closing, we had up to 35% of isolated bacteria uh, demonstrating antibiotic activity. In Dr. Kim Ritchie's previous work, she identified between 2 and 21% uh, in skates and rays. Um, we did not identify any trends as of yet, like per sex, per stage of life, or anything like that. Um, but as results uh, continue, those may identify themselves. Um, again, our preliminary results suggest that black tips may have a higher diversity of culturable antibiotic producing bacteria. But we do need higher numbers of sharks to establish a baseline for health studies. Um, and as I said in the previous slide, we have over 20 promising isolates for drug discovery from this shark pool. Again, I would like to thank OSEARCH and everything that you're doing, um, fighting for the future sustainability of our oceans. And I would also like to thank all of our other partners. Thank you.